I'm currently on the island of Miyajima which is near the city of Hiroshima in Japan and this morning I'm going to try and photograph Itsukushima Shrine which is a famous monument here. Look at this. This island's absolutely packed full of really tame deer. <laughs> it's so utterly bizarre. See ya fella. Um, <laughs> The weather is really, really overcast this morning, so I think I'm going to go for some sort of long exposure seascapes. Basically, the shrine is a giant uh, toy gate which sits out in the actual water, and at high tide it, it appears to float in the water, and it's quite magnificent. It's painted orange, so it should pop out really well on these kind of overcast sort of days. So, I'm thinking, yeah, long exposure is the way to go. I'm just on my way there now. It's early in the morning. It's about five past six currently. And there's not another soul to be seen. So, fingers crossed, I may actually have it all to myself. see Itsukashima Shrine behind me here and it really is quite a magnificent site actually. I was a little bit skeptical on how impressive it would actually be but yeah it, it really does appear to float on top of the water and it's in such a tranquil setting on this beautiful island. Sadly I don't have it all to myself there are a few other people here but really there's not very many of them at all so yeah, it doesn't bother me all that much. Um, I do have my camera set up and I'll take you down to it. You can see it set up just there. And basically, the composition that I've picked out here allows me to shoot the actual gate from the side, but allows me to still kind of make out all six supporting columns of the actual gate. If I change my angle um, to either left or right from here, I think I'd lose that perspective to some degree and also I like the fact that the gate is kind of lining up with the headland that you can see in the background there. I think it's the, the perfect spot right here really. Um, in terms of setup I have got on a circular polarizer, I've got on my six stop Lee filter and I've also got on a two stop soft edge grad filter as well. Um, the, um, the grad filter is designed to try and bring out a little bit more drama in this terribly boring sky that you can see above me at the moment. Um, it's really dr dreadful conditions to be honest so hopefully that might be able to pull out a little bit more detail from that. The six stop is going to allow me to run a long exposure so I can just polish off that sea and hopefully catch more of the reflection of the gate down in the water. Um, I, want, I want to minimise distractions in the image and that means polishing off this water and getting rid of the detail in it really. Um, and the circular polarizer, although there's too, not too much light, um, it will punch out the contrast a little bit. And it's also taken about a stop and a half of light away as well. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to add and work together with the six stopper to, to give me like a, a seven and a half stop reduction in light, um, which is... I think perfect. I did try the 10 stopper on it, it, just, it was just a bit too much. Light levels are so, so low that I'd have to run a massively long exposure and I just didn't think it really justified it at all. In terms of actual settings, I'm at F11, ISO 64, um, and I'm running exposures at about 40 seconds, and that seems to be about right now, and I'm shooting at 60 mils. And that has given me the perfect results. A few other quick things that you should be wary of when you're taking long sea exposures like this image here is if you're using a lens that's got vibration reduction, turn it off. There's no vibrations to reduce so there's no point even engaging that on the actual lens. Um, 
The second thing is you really need to watch the water surface. So at the moment, we've got ferries sort of coming in from this sort of angle, sort of crossing this uh, channel here, but also crossing over to the island. And when they do cross, it creates a lot of big waves coming in which is totally disrupting the actual uh, reflections of the gate here. So whenever you're taking these kind of images, you need to be aware of your surroundings um, and environment to make sure that you're taking the images at the optimum time in order to catch the water surface in the way that you want it. Also, when you're using a, um, like an ND filter like this, like a six stopper or a 10 stopper, um, your autofocus feature will be greatly reduced. So you really want to set your focus point first, switch it into manual focus, um, and then pop on your ND filters, because if you try and focus with the ND filter on the front, your camera is just going to hunt because it can't find the contrast point within the scene. I've now come round the other side of the bay. I was shooting about here, and if you look very carefully, you can probably see it's absolutely overrun by visitors. As the ferries cross to this island, they just bring more and more people, and probably in an hour or two, you won't be able to move the visitors to this place. Um, the tide's also going out, which is changing the dynamics of the water surface. As the water gets shallower, um, you're starting to get more disturbances on the water surfaces. So, the reflections that I got at the gate wouldn't quite work now actually so I think I actually timed it perfectly for the time of day uh, to avoid the crowds but also to capture the high tide water. Um, all in all I think the image that I got is all right it's it's not gonna set the world alight but it, genuinely I feel it's probably the best I could have done in today's conditions because the light is absolutely <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's uh, it's been a nice morning. It's it's been nice to come out and um, yeah, experience this beautiful, beautiful island. It's got so much potential here. I really wish I had longer to explore it because with the right conditions, some of these uh, compositions around here, the gate and the temple complex that you can see here, could look absolutely stunning. Sadly, that brings me to a close on today's video and my entire Japan journey as I'm flying home tomorrow, which is quite sad to be honest. I'm really going to miss this country. It's been thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyable and so interesting. Maybe one of the most interesting places I've ever visited. Um, photographically speaking, it's been a massive challenge as well. It's put me in circumstances and environments that I'm just not used to, to dealing with at all. Those busy urban environments, the crowds, um, even the, the weather conditions have been quite different to what I'm used to. So yeah, it's really pushed my boundaries as a photographer. I hope I've managed to capture my journey and, and bring some images that are worthwhile. I think, um, I think I've managed to do that. Let me know your thoughts on today's image below and generally the whole Japan series, the four videos I've done. I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts on it. And um, yeah, I, uh, I'm going to have to put the vlogging camera down, at, I think, and enjoy the rest of today. And uh, generally speaking, I probably could have done more vlogs on this journey, but I, I need to find that balance because this is a holiday. This isn't a vlogging photography trip. So I tend to come out early in the morning like this capture some images, capture some video, put the camera down, put the vlogging camera down and enjoy my time. And that's generally my philosophy and I hope it's managed to work pretty well. Um, yeah, so thanks very much for watching and um, I'll see you on the next video, which will probably be in some Isle of Man remote location doing normal landscape photography. Yeah, quite a change. See you all soon. Goodbye.